Hello, everybody. This is Tim here again to another movie review. This time, yes, another Marvel one. I finally got to watch Black Widow. I've been putting it off for a while because my wife wanted to watch it with me. Now, Black Widow's been kind of getting a mixed response from people online. I know there's this whole, like, Disney and ScarJo controversy where she wanted, like, a certain amount of money that they would supposed to have paid her, but they didn't. If she really was entitled to that money, then she does deserve it because that was part of the deal. Uh, and she put in the work. But at the same time, actors make millions of dollars, especially sc actors on, uh, who are in big Marvel franchises. You know she's getting paid extremely well and is extremely wealthy, so she doesn't really need the money. So at the same time, it it is it is kind of stupid to even gripe about it. Uh, at least bring it to the forefront instead of just trying to work it out with the studio from behind the scenes. But yeah, um, as far as, like, the movie goes, Scarlett Johansson as Black Widow has been long overdue for a movie. Frankly, I think it's way too late at this point to really even give her a movie. The fact that they waited this long, the character, like, the hype is gone. Like, it's gone for this character. And the fact that we already know she dies, that makes this movie a prequel, takes away, like, 50% of the tension. Already, if you know anything about movies, uh, you know this being a superhero flick. You know that she's not really gonna die. Um, so, part of the tension is already kind of gone, but you still want to at least feel like there's maybe some stakes but when you know it's a prequel you know she can't die so when in the movie when they try to make you think oh she might die it's like no she can't so pretty much i liked how this movie starts out it kind of caught me off guard where it's like uh these two little kids and they got this little girl trying who's like kind of like a tomboy type look trying to kind of look like a young scar joe as a kid um, they're fine. They're acting here as, like, yeah, David Harbour is, like, the dad. Later on, and this little girl, this little blonde-haired girl is cute as the supposed sister. Later on, you find out that they're just kind of a surrogate family. That they're just kind of put in there. Like, the parents, Rachel Wise from the Mummy movies and David Harbour from Stranger Things, are really just, like, working for, like, some kind of terrorist dude or whatever who makes, like, super soldier women. And they're just, like, taking care of the kids long enough to, for, before they can be, like, uh, put into the Black Widow program to become super spies or whatever and have their bodies uh, messed with so they can't have children yeah uh and the movie just kind of jumps into the action at the beginning i'll just go ahead and say it as far as like this flick goes i judge my movies from one to four stars this is a two this is an okay or a passable time waster movie right off the bat like i said it being a prequel hurts the film and uh when the movie starts out it is pretty serious but then when it does a time skip to when they're older it picks up like right after civil war i liked that general ross william heard his back it was neat seeing him here um they de-aged him but honestly i thought he looked better in uh the actual civil war movie he looked younger there it's like kind of made him look a little more haggard here but yeah um He's not after Black Widow or whatever, and they they think that she's like in this bathroom and she's talking to him on the phone. But if you're, you know anything about movies, you know she's not really there, and she's like on a yacht or whatever, or a cruise ship. And um, she goes, she's working with this black dude who's like this arms dealer guy, or whatever, who gets her all this weaponry. It's pretty much a spy flick, is which makes sense for a Black Widow movie. There's two ways they could have went with Black Widow in the MCU. Make her like a tough, more realistic spy or like the sexy femme Patel spy. And that's pretty much what they go for. Scarlett Johansson is the sexy spy. But they give her, they've given her depth and all that in these movies. But like I said, this movie has come way too late. Um, and you got Black Widow in the film. Scarlett Johansson does a good job. I liked her here. She was good. The girl who plays like her surrogate sister or whatever, Elena, she does a good job as well. She's fine. Um... David Harbour shows back up. He's in the Red Guardian or something like that. We find out when his past, he was like a super soldier. I don't think they ever explained how he became a super soldier. It's just the Marvel Universe at this point, and there's just happens to be super soldiers everywhere, so we just accept it. Uh, he was really serious at the beginning, but later on, you find out the dude he worked for, who's the main bad guy in the movie, who, like, forced all these girls to become soldiers or whatever, that um, he just kind of left him in prison eventually. He just got tired of him. And uh, he... He comes, when he comes back, he's just, like, all jokey through the whole movie. He just transforms into the comic relief after being serious at the beginning. I thought that was a mistake. This movie tries to have a slightly more serious tone for a Marvel movie, and I like that because I think that suits a Black Widow spy flick. Gives it a little, little bit more intensity. Still not a huge dark movie, but it's darker for a Marvel movie. But uh, at the same time, um, they make his character into just, like, a total goofball, and he is funny, but he just becomes a comic relief. That's all he is. That's all David Harbour is in this movie. And David Harbour, his acting, I think, is great here. He does, I think he does a great job doing what they wanted from him, but I don't think what they wanted from him is that interesting character-wise. And Rachel Wise, uh, I like her. She comes back as well. She's just, like, this pig farmer now, or whatever. And you find out she, like, ratted him out to, uh, the main dude, and they're coming there to pick him up. And they're literally trying to get the guy basically to get revenge on him, on him for what they did to him as children, making him in these super spies and all that. 
And but then you find out then she betrays him, teams up with Scarlett Johansson and them, and it was Scarlett Johansson like pretending to be her after she gets on the sky ship thing that they're hiding in. Kind of reminds me of like a Samuel Jackson Hello Carrier thing from Shield or Hello Carrier or whatever you call it. And um she takes off like one of those mask things that they had in Civil War, and it's not Rachel Wise, it's her. And Rachel Wise is pretending to be Scarlett Johansson in her cell. She takes off one, it's her. And then they team up, and you got this other robot type villain, like who's Taskmaster, I believe is the character's name from the comics. I actually like the origin story they have here for Taskmaster. I don't know anything about this character from the comics. As far as the origin goes here, like her being a, uh, she was basically the main bad guy's daughter. And sometime after Scarlett Johansson was like trying to look for this guy to get revenge on him, she actually blew up the dude's daughter to get to her like she was willing to murder a child an innocent child so right off the bat that kind of makes you maybe not like scarlett johansson that much that was a ballsy move but they go back on it how they go back on it is they bring her back and she has been turned into a soldier herself by her father as a weapon because he just doesn't care about anybody this dude doesn't so he's made her into a weapon he's just using her basically as a robot and she's under mind control because he's got this gas that's making all every all the black widow women or whatever super soldier women uh just like mind control controlled or super spies and uh or he's got some kind of device he does to him and there's this uh, red spray chemical that the black widow and the blonde haired chick elena have to use to like get him out of it and that's pretty much what they're doing by the end of the movie saving the other women and trying to take this dude down but how they go back on it is the fact they're like oh well she didn't really die from the explosion that scarlett johansson did so technically she didn't kill her so you can still root for scarlett johansson and like her i don't like that um I knew when the character came. At the same time, though, I kind of like that as an origin story for the character. But at the same time, by the end of the movie, you don't really feel like Scarlett Johansson has, like, paid for what she did to this child by making her into this. Because she is a contributor to it. And they can't really have her be redeemed for what she did because, honestly, they would have to have her, like, be willing to sacrifice herself, like, jump in front of a bullet or something to save this uh, girl who has been turned into a robot in order to redeem herself for what she did to her, basically. Or a super soldier robot, whatever the hell, she's wearing a robot suit. But uh, they can't really do that because they know you can't get any attention from this movie. So they know that you know that she's not going to die if she does do something like that because she has to sacrifice herself in the future. And so in Endgame. So we have to just look at it as the fact, well, she died in Endgame to try to save everybody. So technically she kind of redeemed herself. But at the same time, it does make her character slightly less, less likable. And they do try to go back on it because of that by having this girl be Taskmaster and be alive. But you, I, just, I like that idea, though, for an origin story for a villain against Black Widow, and you could have done something special with that, and really, this should have been a sequel, and Black Widow should have been alive, they shouldn't have killed her if they were going to do a solo movie, they should have had this before in game, and they should have had her be willing to, like, sacrifice herself to redeem herself for this girl or whatever, so they could have brought that relationship more impactful, there was more you could have done with this, instead they just kind of sugarcoat it. Uh, the main villain, he tries to fly off at the end. The blonde haired chick gets on top of the, his uh, flying aircraft, stabs it with a electric rod, and blows it up and kills him. Uh, they crash land on Earth, or back to Earth on the ground. And um, Scarlett Johansson's there. We get a brief little fight with the robot chick. She doesn't die, which I knew she wouldn't, because she's an innocent, and they want to bring, they're going to want to bring her back for another spinoff show or another Black Widow movie or something else to where she'll end up being like either a superhero or an anti-hero or something. They're going to try to do something with her. And the other Black Widow women, they show up there, and they take off and save David Harbour and Rachel Wise. Um... Uh, one thing is this movie it tries to have emotional death because black widow never knew her mom and we find out that the main dude like killed her mom and took her basically um the main villain and so the other characters who are like her surrogate family even though they were scumbags like david harbour and rachel wise they were scumbags because they pretty much just sold these kids and let them just go into sold these kids out and just let them go into being slaves and tortured by this dude to become super spies so they're scumbags, really. But uh, at the same time, though, they did have some affection for the children because they raised them. But you, And Scarlett Johansson and the, the Elena actress, uh, they have some affection for them as well because they are a surrogate family and they were all the newest family. But you don't totally feel it, even though the actors' performances are good. You don't totally feel it because we didn't get to spend enough time with them from the beginning about how they were together as a family. That should have been part of the first act. They shouldn't have rushed into just going through, going and getting by all that. Or there should have been more flashbacks to stuff. But they rushed through that. Uh, that was a mistake. And that's another problem with, again, this movie coming way too late. This should have been like the first Black Widow movie in a trilogy of Black Widow films. This is way too late, this movie is. Um, 
And then at the end, that's pretty much it. You got General Ross, like, showing up, coming after Scarlett Johansson, and then it cuts away, and Scarlett Johansson has just gotten away again, and we don't really know how. Uh, I think she, I guess she just rode off but it, with the other people, but it seems like she's telling them to leave, and just, she'll handle everything. But then she just gets away in the next scene, so I, I don't know. But, um... And then you get the bonus scene after the credits. It's uh, the blonde-haired chick is being told by this Valentine or Valentine girl or whatever uh, who was actually in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. They were showing her in there where she recruited uh, Kurt Russell's son, I believe it was the actor's name, or who the actor was, and or Wyatt Russell, I think was his name. And uh, he was good in that show, but uh, she was, like, recruiting him as well. So they're setting up something here to where she's trying to form, like, some kind of team or something. Um, recruiting people for whatever reason. And we find out that she tells her basically that uh, Hawkeye is responsible for killing Black Widow, but we know that's not true. And we know that they're going to try to make this blonde-haired chick the Elena character, the new Black Widow, which I'm fine with. Uh, she's she she doesn't she's a different type of character than Scarlett Johansson. She's not so much in the sexy spy range. She is a pretty girl, but she's not overly like dolled up like Scarlett Johansson. She's more she's got more of the ballsy, tough attitude. So, what we are, and I believe I've heard that her character is coming back in the uh, Hawkeye miniseries that's coming out. So, what I'm getting from this is, obviously, she's going to show up, have tr problems with Hawkeye for a while. We know she's not going to kill Hawkeye. And they're going to fight for a while, and eventually they're going to have to team up to take down a bad guy. And then, she, that's going to be her initiation, basically, into the new Avengers team, or whatever the hell they're going to do for the new big team-up movie. And that's pretty much the way that's going to go. I think we can all guess that. All in all, I found this movie to just be a two-star passable flick. I liked it even less than Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel was more just more average. This film just suffers from coming just way too late. Um, it's not a terrible movie. It's not. It's a time waster. It's a one-off watch. I've seen many films like this. Um, it's passable. It's harmless. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you again.